Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a little boy somewhere in Massachusetts named Danny. And Danny is a little bit different from his classmates. He's in first grade, and he has a speech delay. And he also chooses to show his uniqueness by every day wearing a suit coat and a tie. Now Danny gets picked on sometimes by his classmates. They tease him and sometimes they laugh at him because of who he is and because of who he wants to be. Our reading from 1 Peter is likely written to people in a similar kind of situation. Being Christian in the Roman Empire wasn't an easy thing. Christians were persecuted. They were kept out of the trading guilds so they couldn't get the best work. They were laughed at. Who would want to worship a god who died? They could even be imprisoned or killed for their belief in Jesus. On top of that, one of the commentaries that I read about this reading this week talked about how it was probably written to people at a, in a location in the Roman Empire that was, well, kind of considered backwards. The people there were seen as not so smart, rustic, uneducated, maybe just a little bit quaint. They wouldn't have been treated very well. They would have been used to teasing and to having insults hurled at them. Our reading today is for people who are made fun of teased, discriminated against, and persecuted because of where they live, how they live, and who and what they believe in. Now we may not share all of those characteristics, but I'd say it's not true anymore that our faith gives us a place of privilege in the world. In fact, I would venture that most of us at one point or another have felt, if not persecuted, at least afraid to share what we believe. True, we aren't generally arrested for what we believe. True, we don't have to worry about being killed for our faith. And true, we know many very accepting people. But I would guess that most of us at one time or another have tried to hide our faith from someone around us. Finding ways to talk around it or being careful not to mention it. Being fearful of the reaction we might get from a friend or a coworker or a boss or even a family member if we shared what we really believe fearful that we might be teased or ostracized or somehow penalized for loving Jesus. We live in a society where more and more there are assumptions made about what it means to be Christian. Assumptions that aren't always positive. Assumptions that can change someone's opinion of you, not always for the better. In the secular eyes of our world, Christians are seen as conservative, judgmental, elitist, hypocritical, and the list goes on. We are often judged by those overarching traits, whether we are that way or not, whether that's what Jesus teaches us or not. The early church that 1 Peter is written to understands persecution in a variety of forms. And in the midst of that environment, 
they receive the words that we heard today. Come as living stones and let yourselves be used in building the spiritual temple. Think for a minute about the stones that would have been used in those buildings. Each stone must be chosen for a specific location and a specific place in a building. They're not randomly placed together. Each stone is carefully shipped from its site to the place where it is being set. And it is made for a specific job, a specific place, a specific fitting into the whole building. There can be no mistakes, no unfinished places, no fixing. These stones were cut and sized individually to fit together perfectly, often miles from where they ended up in the quarry. Each one was unique, without a blemish, in order for the building to stand. And many of those buildings still stand today. That's how well they fit together. The author of 1 Peter is calling the people to be living stones, to embrace the reality that they are carefully chosen stones that will become an incredible building. God is picking rocks, choosing with care the best, the strongest, the right rocks for the job. And all of those backward Christians of the day, they're in the special pile. They are in the chosen pile. Chosen to be part of a building. And not just any building, but a temple. A building that points to God. That helps others recognize God's amazing power and love for the world. These people may be persecuted and looked down on, but they are chosen by God to become a beacon of faith and hope. Remember Danny, the little boy I started my sermon with? Danny was being picked on by the other students in his school because he dressed differently and he talked differently. But Danny was also the water boy for the fifth grade football team. And the football team started to hear about this teasing. They started to hear that Danny was being bullied. And so they decided to do something about it. They wanted to show Danny that he was loved just the way he was in all of his uniqueness. So one day, they all got together and they picked a day, and one day the entire football team, all 45 members, came to school with their ties and their suit coats. They didn't lash out at the other students. They didn't punish the wrongdoers. They simply dressed in a way that told their tiny water boy, it's okay to be exactly who you are. And that they would stand by him together. The local news picked up the story and interviewed Danny and his parents and some of the boys the next day. And the boys said in the interview, they simply wanted Danny to know he was loved. And they apparently accomplished that mission because Danny's parents said that night he came home and as he went to bed, he said, I feel so loved today. Each of the boys on that team, Danny included, is a living stone, unique, special, chosen 
and together they built a temple of sorts, one that pointed the way to love and respect in their school amidst persecution. The author of 1 Peter says to us today, come as living stones and let yourselves be used in building the spiritual temple. We may see ourselves as persecuted from time to time or teased or pushed aside because of our faith. We may prefer to sit on the sidelines and let the world ignore our faith. We may feel like we have nothing or no way to offer love or hope in the world. But today we are told, come as living stones. Remember that you are special, chosen for your gifts and your strengths and your flaws. Remember that you are special, chosen to fit perfectly with others in the building. Remember that you are special, chosen and precious despite what the world may say. We are told, let yourselves be used in building a spiritual temple. Let yourselves be part of something bigger. Let yourselves be used to point to God. Let yourselves become a beacon of love so that others may see God. And we are reminded of something else today, and that is that Jesus is the first stone, the one who had first experienced what it felt like to be rejected and passed over by those who thought they were master builders. The one who was taunted by the people and called worthless. The one whose followers were deemed crazy to follow him. And yet, Jesus is the cornerstone. The stone that holds all the others together. Chosen by God and precious. The reason that that building is standing at all. As we struggle to be the stones that God sees us as, the rocks that God has hand-picked and hand-shaped, we are reminded that Jesus walked the road ahead of us, that Jesus understands the difficulties, the fears, the dangers of being a chosen stone that Jesus has been where we are and walks with us. That Jesus now holds steady that building that we are being set into. A building that takes shape with many stones all chosen and precious to God. A building that points the way to God and to God's love in the midst of our everyday lives. Amen.